When we make a request to an ASP.NET Core application, we might need to provide some data to it. This data can be provided in different ways. For example, we can use query string or route parameters or request body, etc. So it is the responsibility of the ASP.NET Core application to retrieve the data passed to it before starting to process the request. In our previous lectures, we have learned how to retrieve the query string value and the route parameter values. Basically, in order to retrieve the query string values, on the request object, we have this query dictionary. And in that dictionary, all the query strings and its values, which we have specified in the URL, they will be available as the key value pair. In the same way, in order to retrieve the route parameter values, we have this route values dictionary. In the route values dictionary, all the route parameters and its values will be stored as a key value pair. So we can retrieve a query string value or a route parameter value by using its key. So for example, if we want to retrieve the value of this book ID query string, this book ID will be the key and it will have some value. So this expression here, it is going to return the value of the book ID query string. In the same way, when we use author route parameter, for that author route parameter, we need to specify some value in the URL. So this expression here, it is going to return the value of that author route parameter. Here, the author will be the key and the value which we have specified for it in the URL, that will be its value and that will be returned by this expression. But the problem with this approach is, this approach is error prone, time consuming and lengthy too. For example, if I misspell this author route parameter, at the compile time, we will not get any error. But at the runtime, we might run into exceptions. Okay, so this approach is error prone. Then it is also lengthy because if you see, in order to retrieve only a single route parameter or a single query string, we have to write this expression. Then we have to convert it to appropriate data type and then we need to assign it to a variable and then we can use it. So this approach is okay if we have only one query string or only one route parameter. But if we have multiple query strings or multiple route parameters, then for each query string or for each route parameter, we will have to write the same expression. And that will be a bit time consuming, right? So in order to simplify the code, in order to retrieve data from the request parameters, ASP.NET Core has a concept called model binding. And let's try to understand model binding with a simple example. So the first thing which I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these two lines of statements from here. And to this action method, I'm going to specify some parameters. And yes, it is possible to specify parameters for an action method because an action method is simply a method and we can have parameters for a method. So here I'm going to specify two parameters. The first parameter will be of type integer. I'll call it book ID. And the second parameter will be of type string and I'll call it author. And this is it. And for now, from here, I will remove this author route parameter. So now what will happen is, let's say in the URL, the user has typed root URL slash books, and he has specified two route parameters, book ID equals 101 and author equals Steve. So here, this 101 value, it will be assigned to this book ID and this Steve, it will be assigned to this author. And this is called as model binding. And this model binding will happen automatically by the ASP.NET Core application. We don't have to do anything here. When the request is received by the controller, it will automatically assign these values to the appropriate parameters of the action method. Let me actually show you that in action. But before that, let's go to this program.cs file. And from here, I will remove this route. And also, in order to use controllers in our application, on this builder object, we need to call services and on that services we can call add controllers method and then we also need to use app dot map controllers method so here we have already put the breakpoint let's go ahead and let's run this application in debug mode and here we are in the root url there let's type slash books and then let's specify some query string. So let's say we want to specify this book ID query string. Its value is 101. And we also want to specify author query string. And let's say its value is John. Let's press enter. So the breakpoint has hit here. 
and if I hover over this book ID, just notice what is the value here. So you will notice that the value here is 101, the same value which we have specified for the book ID query string. In the same way, if I hover over this author, you will notice that the value here is John, the same value which we specified for author query string in the URL. So as you can notice, if the query string key matches the parameter name, in that case, the value which we are assigning to that query string will be assigned to that particular parameter. Now here, it is case insensitive. So in the URL, let me again go ahead and let me continue here. So you can see book ID is 101 and author is John. So in the same way, if I specify book ID and let's say this time I will keep book ID. So B is in uppercase and here I is in uppercase. In the same way, for the author, I will keep A in uppercase. Okay, and let's say author is maybe Steve. And also the book ID is 102. If I press enter, you will notice that this time the book ID is assigned with 102, the new value which we have assigned, and the author is assigned with the value Steve. Okay, so this proves that these are case insensitive. And one more thing which you need to remember here is that if you don't specify a value for a query string or if you don't specify the query string at all, in that case, these parameters will be null. So let me run this again. Let me continue. And here, if I don't specify these query strings, in that case, those parameters will be null. If I press enter, now you will notice that this book ID is zero. So a default value has been assigned to it and this author is null. So since string is a reference type, the default value will be null and that has been assigned to this author. For this book ID, since the default value for integer is zero, that has been assigned here. But we can also make it as nullable type. So in that case, this book ID will be assigned with the value null. And let me again show you that. So let's continue here. And let's make a request again. And now if I hover over this book ID, you see its value is null and author is also null because we have not specified any query string with key as book ID or key as author. So this is about query string. Now what about route parameters? Well, let me stop this debugging here. And let's say instead of passing the values as query strings, we want to pass the values as route parameters. So first of all, in the route, we need to specify those route parameters. I'll specify the route parameter as book ID and author. Okay, so now what will happen is this book ID route parameter value, it will be assigned to this book ID parameter and this author route parameter value, it will be assigned to this author parameter. So let me go ahead and let me run this application again. And again, I will run it in debug mode. So here, let's say root URL slash books slash, and then we want to specify the value for book ID route parameter. Let's say it is 200. And then we also want to specify the author name. Let's say it is Mary. Let's press enter. And now you will notice that this book ID is assigned with the value 200. And this author, it is assigned with the value Mary. Okay. So just like how it works for query string, in the same way it works for route parameters. Based on the route parameter name, if we have any parameter for the action method with that name, that will be assigned with that route parameter value. But now the question is, what if the route parameter and the query string both contains the same key? For example, let me continue here. So here we are specifying the value for book ID as 200 and for author as Mary. After that, let's say I also specify the book ID query string and I set it to 100. And I also set author query string and I assign it with the value, let's say, John. So now, which value will be assigned to the action method parameter? So for example, this book ID, will it be assigned with the value 100, which we are passing for query string book ID, or it will be assigned with the value 200, which we are passing for the route parameter? Well, keep in mind that route parameters will get higher preference over the query string. So if we have same key for both route parameter and the query string, then the value which we are specifying for the route parameter that will get more preference and that will be assigned to the action method parameter. 
let me actually show you that so in this case 200 should be assigned to the book id and mary should be assigned to author parameter and these values which we are specifying in the query string these will be ignored let me go ahead and let me press enter and if i hover over this book id you see 200 is assigned for book id parameter and mary is assigned for author parameter and these are the values which we are passing for these route parameters so the query string values have been ignored here so this is very important to understand that route parameters will have higher preference over query string key now the next question is let's say i want to read the value of book id from the route parameter but i always want to read the author from the query string but since the route parameter will have higher precedence whatever value we are assigning to the author route parameter that will be assigned to this author parameter for this book action method but i want to read the value for this author parameter from the query string how can i do that well for that we have an attribute called from query so here we can use that attribute so here we are explicitly specifying that we want to read the value of this author parameter from the query string okay so let me stop debugging here and let me go ahead and let me restart this application so again i will run it in debug mode let's go ahead and let's specify the url so it is root url slash books slash let's say id is 100 and author is steve and then i also want to specify the query strings so in that case i will specify book id equals maybe 200 and author equals john so in the action method parameter we have used from query attribute so here the author value will be read from the query string so the author should be assigned with this value john but for the book id since we have not specified anything explicitly it should read the value from route parameters because route parameters have higher preference over query string so book id will be read from route parameters that means the book id should be 100 but since we have explicitly specified that for the author we want to read its value from the query string the author parameter should be assigned with this value john let's see that let's press enter you will notice that book id is 100 so that is okay because for this book id route parameter we have passed the value as 100 but if i hover over this author you will notice that author is john and this john it is reading from the query string and not from the route parameter because for the route parameter we have specified the author value as steep so it has ignored that value and it is reading this value from the query string the author name from the query string so i hope it is clear in the same way if you want to explicitly specify that you want to read a parameter value from route parameters you can use another attribute called from route okay so here we are explicitly telling that we want to read the value of this book id from the route parameters if it is not present in route parameter but it is present in the query string it is not going to read it it will only read it from the route parameter in the same way for the author it will only read the value for this author parameter from the query string if the value for this author parameter is not present in the query string that means if there is no query string called author in the url and if there is a value for the author route parameter here it is not going to read that value since here we are explicitly specifying that this author value should come from query string if it is not present in the query string it will be set with the value null okay and to demonstrate that what i'm going to do is i'm going to make these route parameters as optional and let me go ahead and let me run this application now here i'll say root url slash books but i'll not specify value for book id route parameter and author route parameter because they are optional i'll simply specify the query string so i'll say book id equals 500 and author equals jonas so since we are reading the value of the author from the query string it will be assigned with the value jonas but here in the code we have specified explicitly that for the book id we want to read the value from route parameters but here in the url we are not passing any book id or author route parameter value 
So in that case, it is not going to read the value from this book ID query string. In that case, since we have not specified the book ID route parameter, it is going to be null. Let's actually see that. So when I run this, you will notice that this book ID is null. It has not read the value from the query string because here we are explicitly specifying that we want to read the value for this book ID from the route parameters. But here, if I hover over this author, it is assigned with the value Jonas because here we are specifying that we want to read the value for this author parameter from the query string. And in the query string, we have set this author with the value Jonas. So that has been read and that has been assigned to it. All right. Finally, one more thing which I want to mention here is that if you want to check if any of these parameters has a value on these parameters, you can use a has value property. So for example, here I can say if book ID dot has value. So this has value will return true if this book ID contains a valid value, if it is not null or empty string. Okay, so if it has some value, if it is not null or empty string, in that case, this has value will return true. Otherwise, if this book ID is null or if it is empty string, in that case, it will return false. So here we can check if book ID has value equals false, then we want to return some content and there let's say book id not provided okay and let's say the type is text slash plain so this is how you can check whether a parameter the parameter of the action method if it has some value or not if i run this again and here if i say slash books if I press enter, you will see that book ID is not provided because we have not specified any value for the book ID route parameter. So in that case, this book ID will be null. And in that case, this has value will return false. All right. So this is all from this lecture. In the next lecture, let's see how we can work with model class.